We are back on Get Up, and the game is called Swagoo Says. I will bring up an idea here, and then we will hear what Marcus has to say about that. Swagoo, which team is the biggest threat to Kansas City next season? Yeah, I skipped the AFC, G. I went to the Detroit Lions mm. in the NFC side. We talked earlier. I think they felt like they missed an opportunity. But the way this team is built and what they believe in themselves is how you can beat the Kansas City Chiefs. We saw Dan Campbell go for fourth down after fourth down. As much as we talked about it, you need some of those type of plays against the Kansas City Chiefs. And this team is built from front to back, and they want to be a physical football team, which wins a lot of games in this league. I'm going to go Detroit. They were awful close last year. I like it. Next, what should the Dolphins do this offseason? Big decision. Pay their quarterback now or wait another year? Yeah, pay him now. Pay to him now. He had a really good season last year. Obviously, there are things that are left to be desired. But, gee, you know how this goes, man. This is supply and demand. And it ain't like it's a bunch of guys walking around as good as Tua um, that you can sign unless one of these high-level guys became available. So pay to announce, start to con continue to build out this roster, build out this team, and see where you can go. I'm with that. And then here's your old team as our resident former Cowboy. Mike Zimmer is back in Dallas as the defensive coordinator. Was that the right choice? I love Mike Zimmer. And, and yes, from a coaching standpoint, from how good he's called defenses, my only pause and the reason why I'm met on this G is because I want to see what the front office is going to do as far as building a roster defensively and having what it takes to actually give Mike Zimmer all the pieces that's needed in order to have success. That's my issue. I talked about this a couple of days ago. People were like, you're not excited about Mike Zimmer. It has nothing to do with that. I want to be excited about what the Cowboys do at free agency as far as building a spine on their defense. This team last year, and I'm going to say it because you heard me say it a hundred times. This, this team in the National Football League that was trying to win a Super Bowl played football without a linebacker. Without, think about that. Think about the teams we just saw play in the playoffs. Bolton, Chanel, Gay for the Kansas City Chiefs, Werner, uh, unfortunately lost Dre Greenlaw, Roquan Smith, Patrick Queen, look at the teams that ended up having a tremendous amount of success. That part was missing. You bring in a new, new defense coordinator. If you don't have linebackers, I don't give a damn who he is. You ain't, <laughs> ain't going to look like a good one. <laughs> well, Zimmer was actually in Dallas the last time that team won a Super Bowl. And so, of course, was Emmitt Smith, the Cowboys legend. And now with Zimmer back again, Emmitt Smith has a lot to say. I want to read you some quotes from the legendary Emmitt Smith, as beloved a former Cowboy as there is. He said, I'm tired of being sold on what the Cowboys could be. I'm tired. I've had enough of it because I'm more about what the Cowboys really are and who we really are and who we were. Nobody wants to fight no more. No one wants to fight hard anymore. They want to say, oh, we are the Cowboys. Tell me how good I am. Check out my Instagram posts. See me on my podcast. I'm doing all this stuff. I'm everything without doing everything. And everybody's patting them on the back. People want to give them so much without doing nothing. And what they're living off of is what happened in the past, not what's going down right now. We are delighted to, as usual, uh, mm, borrow Chris mm, Canty from Unsportsmanlike mm. on ESPN Radio just for this conversation. <laughs> what do you think of what Emmett said, big fella? Well, Emmett's tired, and I guess it's ironic because he's got something to Cowboy with the Cowboys team this year because according to Demarcus Lawrence, who was on first take last year from the Super Bowl, the Cowboys were too tired and too burnt out to put up a fight against the Green Bay Packers in the playoffs. Yeah. And that's the part to me that's the biggest issue down there in Dallas. I hear what Marcus is talking about as far as the overall talent on the roster, but by far the bigger issue is the culture down there in Big D. And Mike Zimmer is going to go a long ways to being able to help that out. Like Mike Zimmer is a no-nonsense type of coach. He's off of that Bill Parcells coaching tree. He's going to bring the, the requisite things that you need a DC to do. He's got versatility in his scheme, whether it's 3-4, 4-3. He mixes it up with zone and man. You're not going to get a beat on him that way. But I think the most important thing is he's going to be no nonsense. He's going to coach these guys hard. And from what it sounds like, that's something that's needed in Dallas. Absolutely. And, and you know, Lewis, you and I were talking about Emmett's comments earlier this morning. And basically what, 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 what you were telling me he's saying is these Cowboys are still living off of what his Cowboys did a generation ago. There is absolutely no doubt 
That's what he's saying. Y'all are all getting paid and having podcasts and, you know, getting put on GQ Sport Instagram page with your luggage and stuff as you're walking out the hotel, getting on the plane and stuff. You're getting all this attention off of the work that I did, off of the work that the playmaker did, off the work that Eric Williams did, off of the work that Darren Woodson did, off of the work that Troy Aikman did. Because I can tell you this, those teams, those teams weren't having it. I played against those teams. When they came out on the field, it wasn't like they, they weren't just trying to beat you. They were trying to like, like they were trying. I don't even want to say they were trying to embarrass you. They were trying to punk you for three hours. And it was very, very evident. They played with a much different resolve, a much different competitive temperament. And they did it week after week after week. And Emmett Smith was right at the forefront. You want to talk about one of the toughest players when we talk about toughness. You want to talk about the toughest players in the history, in the history of the National Football League. Emmett Smith played, I believe he played a playoff, was it a playoff game against the Giants? Where his shoulder was separated. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And mm -hmm. Jimmy Johnson kept giving it to him. And he kept giving it to him on the old school artificial turf. And he's getting dumped play after play. And you see him walking back to the huddle and they give it to him again. And again, and again, and again. And Evan Smith is saying, until somebody down there shows up like I showed up, I don't want to hear none of it. Tell me how good I am. Check out my Instagram posts. See me on my podcast. <laughs> oh, oh, that I mean that, that. Where does that come from? Like uh, people will point to the culture. Who who has to set that? Who who is in charge of? If Emmett is right, who's in charge of getting it right? What well, the, the reality is, and, and I hate being the old man on the lawn, right? Um, or or fitting into that narrative. There is substance to what Emmett is saying, but we also got to acknowledge that this is absolutely a different generation of player. We having this conversation because Dallas falls in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what Emmett is talking about. He's talking about high leverage moments when it's do or die, not showing up, and and, and it's not even about not showing up. It's about how you looked against the Green Bay Packers. I think the disappointment lied with a lot of Cowboy fans and myself when you watch this team, and even just football fans, to look so unprepared, to get beat so bad. Don't let the score at the end of the game be indicative of how this game went. They got dominated by the Green Bay with a quarterback that was starting his first year. That is where this resentment from Emmitt comes from. The part I do disagree with Emmitt about is, bro, Y'all set the tone for this. Like the media coverage, the owner is still the owner that y'all had when David Blaine was in the locker room doing magic tricks and y'all on <laughs> hard knocks. This is a part of who the Cowboys are. So yeah. when I hear people talk about the media attention and guys being polarizing and big figures, that's a part of being a Dallas Cowboy. That is not going anywhere. It's about them guys in the locker room and how they handle it and manage it and show up when it's high leverage moments. Can't yeah, but but, but Jimmy Johnson ain't there, right? That's the difference, right? The, the, that strong presence at the head coaching position. Somebody that's in that building that can set the agenda for the team that's not named Jerry Jones. And that's the problem with the culture. That's the issue. The fish rots from the head down. So if we want to search for reasons why the Cowboys can't be at their best when their best is required in the postseason, then you, all you have to do is point to ownership. I mean, he's got weekly spots on local radio. He's got his own press conference after the game. We don't know if we should listen to the head coach or we should listen to the owner after the game because of how things are playing out in Dallas. So until something about that changes, the results ain't going to change. And that's why Emmett Smith is saying that he's fed up because for all of these guys doing all these podcasts and all that stuff, you know what they're not doing? Winning when it matters the most in the postseason. And I completely understand where he's coming from. Very quickly, because I have to let Chris go. This morning on Unsportsmanlike on ESPN Radio, they're doing a list of the most, because it's Valentine's Day, the most lovable personalities at ESPN. How do none of the three of us make it? Uh, How do because we've already Marcus used all three of you. So no, the, no, rule, no. the rules of the game is we can't use you <laughs> twice. <laughs> we've <laughs> already <laughs> used all of First of all, and Christine Lisi was my first overall pick okay. for a lovable ESPN. Because right, she makes good brownies. She's the best. She does. But I mean, who could be more lovable than the big <laughs> swagoo? The man is a teddy bear. All right. Uh, ESPN Chris Radio already, Chris, morning. my brother. <laughs> Yeah. See to my brother. He already said he the guy but, but you're that not I'm, I'm the guy he want to <laughs> hang out with.